This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. But in this video, I'm going to be calling proof of stake proof of wealth. So it's proof of work versus proof of wealth, and I think this is a better designation for seeing exactly how proof of stake works. So this is what proof of work looks like. It looks like someone who has put in a lot of work. So for example, a muscular body is proof of work, and there's no way to get muscles like this without putting in that work, both lifting and diet. Now you can cheat a little bit with steroids and other techniques, but you still need to lift those weights and put in the work. Now here's what proof of stake looks like. It looks like people with a lot of power and money making the decisions for everyone else. Here's the Fed, for example, the FOMC meeting, and this is basically what a proof of stake system looks like where these people are nominated by powerful political figures or by the banks themselves. Proof of stake is rich people, people with a lot of coins or a lot of power, sitting around and deciding what to do with your money. As I said, the traditional fiat financial system runs on proof of stake. Rich people pay lobbyists to influence the consensus rules, the way the system works. Rich people decide the cost of money. This is the Fed and the other central banks. that They decide the cost of money, which is interest rates, and the supply of money, which is the money supply, and how much, whether the Fed should be doing quantitative easing or quantitative tightening. Rich people get to play by different rules in a proof of stake system. Now, to be clear, I'm not a socialist. I don't have a problem with rich people per se, especially because I probably qualify as one. But I do have a problem when the financial system gives rich people special privileges that other people don't have access to. You can watch the Nancy Pelosi stock tracker if you want to know how this works. You can look at people like Christine Lagarde, who was convicted when she was chief of the IMF, and her reward was she got to become head of the ECB, the European Central Bank. So these people never go away. And we have all the trading scandals, of course, at the Federal Reserve, which is the U.S.'s uh, central bank. This is Richard Clarita. Uh, retiring. We also had uh, Bostic doing something, doing something similar and trading based on on inside information. So this is what a proof of stake system looks like, and it's beyond me why anyone would want to return to something like this. Now, how does it work for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? You have this basic dilemma where a node on the network sees a new block appear, and the question for that node is: Should this new block be trusted? and added to that node's version of the blockchain. Now under a proof of work consensus system, the node checks to see if the miner who produced that new block put in the work. Now this is something that's very easy and clear and objective to check. By contrast, proof of stake, the node checks to see if a lot of rich people, a lot of people with a lot of coins or a large stake on the network to see if they voted for that block. So proof of stake, is proof that your system is being run by rich people who have a lot of coins. And you can probably see how easy that is to game because under proof of stake, you don't have to put in work once you've accumulated that stake and staked it. It doesn't cost anything to, to produce lots of competing blocks or even competing versions of the blockchain. Whereas if a Bitcoin miner, for example, wanted to cheat in this way, they would have to burn tremendous amounts of electricity and basically rewrite the chain from a certain point. Not so with proof of stake, where producing new blocks is essentially costless once you've accumulated that stake and shown your rich person credentials. And so this isn't a problem under proof of work, but it is a problem under proof of stake. And here's the basic fact. Proof of stake just simply does not solve the Byzantine generals problem. There's no way to achieve decentralized consensus with proof of stake, no matter how much smoke and how many mirrors you deploy. So I want you to remember this the next time you hear Vitalik or Charles Hoskinson try to muddy the waters about this. And for proof of stake, I'm sorry, for proof of work, I want you to keep this image in mind. And for proof of stake, I want you to keep these images in mind. And ask yourself, which system, which consensus mechanism do you want to secure your blockchain? Do you want something that can be gamed and become just a version of the old financial system? Or do you want something much newer that cannot be gamed in a much fairer and more just system. And this is why Bitcoin is ethical money and why proof of stake coins are not ethical money. When you combine the use of proof of stake with a large pre-mine, what it means is the people who were initially awarded tokens, usually for not doing any work, just for printing them up, these people end up being the largest stakers on the network and have the power. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, 
and I'll see you in the next video.